Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with veteran jazz alto saxophonist, flautist, composer, band leader, and educator, Steve Schlegel. He talked about his newest 2020 CD, Alive in Harlem. We talked to him in mid-August 2020 about this new album, and it was recorded right before the world shut down, and it's a welcome new release in the preferred live element. We also talk about COVID-19, the hopes for the future, and so much more. Enjoy. What a weird world, man. I know. I mean, uh, it's uh, you know, it's uh, it's been just family, and then now this is one of the first times I've actually, you know, Dave said it was the first time he's had a friend over, and you know, Dave is a pretty social being, and he has a music room, and often has we used to always rehearse there and everything. So it was, um, you know, for him, he said, "Wow, it's been a long time since anybody's even come over, other than you know, he has a sister and a few family members." Um, but it's a uh, wow it's yeah it's a it's a strange time in that way but we had a perfectly normal day i mean um when we did the video he wore a mask even though all day we'd been hanging i said dave why why are you putting the mask on now and he said well i just like to you know if i'm going to send something to out to the world that you know show that i'm paying the respect or whatever so that's just the feeling he had but sometimes the mask is almost now like a a symbol of of something that you know even though to me it kind of looks a little funny on videos when people all have masks on maybe as a sax player i especially find it to be odd you know yeah but. it's I, it's another aspect of all of this that's very strange but man it, it's yeah. great to, yeah it's but you know it, it's it's a part of what we're going to have to do to get back to oh for some sure of, of, of for sure, you know, because uh, my Japanese friends, um, the ones that, that I know that are in Japan, the, the thing about their culture is that they often wear masks anyhow. So, you know, when you walk around Japan, you see, you know, not a lot, but especially women and older people walking down Tokyo streets with masks on on a perfectly normal day years ago. And, like, so um, their culture immediately took to the masks, like back when you remember, like um, they had a ship outside their harbor before we even had it here. They had a, a boat that was docked in, in Harbor, Tokyo. So everybody that was full of people with the, with the you know, uh, virus and, and everybody thought, wow, Japan's going to be overrun. And, and they completely, I mean, everyone put their mask on. And they, they completely have gotten it. There are actually clubs open in Japan. I, I wish I, I wish I could transport myself to Tokyo. I'd be working more <laughs> right now. Yeah. Well, that's another reason why the rest of the world tends to get things before we do, and they 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 are proactive. But you know, it, it, I, I'm really excited to talk about this album. I, I've been so excited about it. I already played it on the show, but you know, there's so Great, many levels man. of this. It, it's it's an album during a pandemic. It's live from Harlem. It's celebrating Bird. So let's start with what's it like to release an album during a pandemic? What's the what? What's it like to release an album during a pandemic? Oh, good question. Yeah, I, I just didn't hear it clearly. Um, yeah, that was very interesting because we, we started this at the end of February when it really was just on the news in China. So we really... The first date we did at the end of February, we had no idea what would uh, suddenly happen. And we decided on the first cut we did was a song of mine, Alive. And so I thought, you know, we're I'm sitting around with Jason, you know, after the first session and going, you know, what do you think about calling it Alive in Harlem? You know, and, and he said, yeah, well, this is Harlem where we're recording because, he, he, you know, we're, we were in West Harlem on, on the um, – uh, 130s on the Riverside, which is um, sometimes called Sugar Hill, but I think it's uh, now called West Harlem more. And so we decided on that title. And then the next session we did, to, the, it was two days of recording, was I think March 10th, and and um, or either 10th or 11th, I'd have to check. And then it was in the news, but it wasn't until the 13th, that day Friday, that the whole city, New York City, shut down. So basically, we got it in right, the recording part of it, we got in right before the whole world, at least the whole city here, shut down. And basically, after that, the whole 
the United States, you know, and you know, we all know what happened after that. And so, um, that, then the difficult, the difficult part about it was mixing the record because my studio that, you know, we recorded at a, at a more or less home studio, like really good recording, but we weren't going to mix it there. We we're going to go to my, I usually go to Trading Ace for all my last four or five records. It's a, a great engineer there, Chris Sullet, and he really knows me, and it's like he's like the fifth wheel in my band right now because he he's the one who's – and so he had completely shut down. He um, he wasn't even allowed to be doing business. You know, in other words, it was – he could technically get in trouble if someone was in his studio at that time when we wanted to mix, which was – let's say April. Um, and so, man, I just, I thought I'd wait it out. And then I realized it wasn't going to. So I called up Chris and said, look, Chris, I'll send you the file, which I, I always mix with him. It's like the two of us um, make a team and we really can get a great mix happening, but I've never done it with just him alone. But luckily I know him well enough. So I said, Chris, I'm kind of in, in a situation here. Can I send you the files? And and um, actually, I I uh, brought brought the you know the hard drive to his mailbox. You know, it's like he I didn't even like see him because that was really in the height of when the, it was on the news, like ridiculous, you know. And so he said, "Man, can you just drop it in my mailbox?" I dropped the hard drive in his mailbox, and he mixed the whole thing. You know, that week, uh, thankfully. I mean, it was a, you know because I would there'd be no other way, no one else I would trust. Uh, well enough to be able to do a good job on that. He knows me pretty well and knows the sound of my music. And so, so he did a perfect job. I think there was one, one song I had to have him do over, but he did a perfect job and we got it, uh, we got it, you know, printed and everything. And then, then became the thing of a lot of radio stations were not quite up to snuff, including I mean, there are a lot that are, which is, I thank God for radio, because there are an awful lot that are running well, like yours probably is, and but there's a lot, even WBGO in my, which is kind of like my home station, is not at all up to snuff right now. Um, they're really behind the ball compared to other stations, and so it's not the same. Usually I get immediately get played on BGO, and sometimes they even pick it as a, their thing that they call radar and that helps in the New York area. People hear it more. So far, VGO has been terrible and a few other stations like that too. But thank God uh, many of them have been full force. So we've been getting, you know, a lot of play and, 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 uh, I hope New York comes around soon, <laughs> but it's, uh, those are the things we've had to go. And then, uh, you know, the thing at first for me, and I think for all of us was um, in these times, especially when it was really drastic a couple months ago, you kind of were like, well, is it good to like promote my new record or something when people are, you know, lining up in hospitals, you know, so it felt a little bit, you know, but then I, a little bit strange to, to think about doing that. But then I, then I really kind of, with myself, I thought that, you know, if there's one thing that's a healing force in the world, I mean, it's not just a cliche, you know, uh, but music is a, a healing force. Even, even if you're sitting in the hospital, God forbid, you know, listening to music on headphones is one of the best things you can do. There's not much else, you know, that's positive there, you know, and, and so, so I really thought, you know, that, that it's, it's a good idea and the title just coincidentally was, perfect and um so far you know and i the other thing was bert i knew then that i wanted to do it for charlie parker's birthday that was something that i had also planned this record around you know and um so that was made it like you know we got to get it out so then this month that it's out there and you know that that all worked out it was it wasn't easy (laughs) yeah i imagine so so talk to me a little bit about you know, of course, here in Kansas, we're not able to do what we wanted to do for Birds 100, which is a pretty big deal on August 29th. I mean, there's going to be sure. some celebrations, you know. But, oh, I'm sure know, in Kansas, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. We and, and every year around this time, it's usually pretty festive. And this year, there was a lot of plans for things to kind of be over the top. But let me let me ask you that part of this recording, you know, paying homage to Bird and kind of, you know, that that notion. Yeah, for sure. I mean, look, when I was a, just a kid and and, and um, first listening, um, that would be one of the first sounds that, that caught me specifically on the alto saxophone and made me want to play it. And cause luckily my parents had things like Bird with Strings and they had this great record, um, a couple of great quartet records on Verve and yeah, like all of the ones on Verve and the ones with Dizzy because my parents really dug Dizzy too. So the point is I, I grew up listening to it before I ever even played saxophone and I loved the sound that he got um, uh, almost all the time. It didn't matter what horn he was playing or whatever, but um, yeah, I, I grew up with that. And, and so then it became a point of, of um, trying to understand what it was because it's one thing to really dig a certain kind of music and then it's another thing to kind of get it inside of it and and understand what's what's going on um, and 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 that took <clears throat> that's a lifelong you know that's a lifelong past because uh, Charlie Parker was pretty advanced in in the way he uh, approached music and. So, you know, I, I really wanted to just um, not do a record of all of his songs, but but do, um, you know, something in, in the spirit of his, you know, I Remember You was a song I learned from him, basically, because, you know, that's, that's you know, when you took, in, in my time when I first learned the song, I, 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 I learned it off of the record, because there weren't, like, necessarily, you know, when I was 14 years old or something, there wasn't a Play a, a real book out or something yet, so I would learn that. I learned, for instance, I remember you. I learned from the Charlie Parker recording, uh, the song. You know the, the changes of the song by listening to the piano player and bass and everything. So you know, I, I wanted to just do something in that spirit and and um, also have it be like purely alto saxophone sound with, with a trio. You, you, it's pretty bare bones and. You know, the alto is what, what, you know, even when you have a piano or, or other horns, you know, it doesn't, you don't hear the sound of the saxophone as clearly as you do in a trio. Um, for me, the, the Sonny Rollins trio at the Vanguard was a big influence also when I was young. And um, in some ways, this record has a little bit of that spirit, you know, that live spirit, but also... Um, even though we weren't playing in front of a crowd or anything, um, it, is, it has a little bit of that sure too of, of of the Sunny Rounds live at the Vanguard vibe, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the one thing that's probably that, that's just totally a part of this world that I'm curious about for musicians is when we do return after COVID nineteen, whenever that is. What do you hope both musician and the audience realizes about this absence away from live music? Well, I think it's going to be a different world, and um, it, we were just, we, we all talk about that, and just yesterday I was with Dave Stryker, we were talking just about the idea of like a club like the Village Vanguard, which is a big part of New York's um, central, you know, kind of um, basement jazz club, but you know, it's, it's iconic, and, and that it's way more than that, and the thing is, you know, people are in a, on a Saturday night down there. You you're right next to everybody when you're in the audience, and basically, even when you're on the bandstand, you know, the front seat is only a few feet <clears throat> from you. So whether you're in the audience or on the bandstand, it's it's you're very in close company in a lot in a lot of these clubs in New York. And I I just I wonder how that's going to you know pan out whether some god forbid that they would have to close but um i you know that's the hard one of the hardest questions to answer because other things seem like they're possible and i guess it could be done in a way like education is going to be done with not the class being full because i have daughters that are in the public school in new york city here and and uh, manhattan and um but the difference is you know you can't have a club and go like okay we're we're only gonna be 
you know, one third filled and we're going to be able to pay the band the same that we did. In other words, the, the whole economics of it are going to be difficult. And I guess the only thing you could wish for is, um, that there's a, a vaccine that's pretty much foolproof that, you know, that's saying a lot because there's always like things about vaccines that people have to, you know, check out. And, and that would be about the only way that it could completely go back to normal is if there was a, you know, a, a wonderful vaccine that had no side effects that everyone agreed was good. And uh, other than that, I, I find it that it could be that open air concerts and things with, with more space, which counts New York out a lot, but other places, there are other venues that have had more space that I play all over the world or all over this country. And they would be the first to, to open up, you know, um, in a healthy way. So I think it's, it's super important. And yet it's, um, we all know that it's, somewhat something that's going to be on the last of the agenda of these politicians and governors and, you know, um, presidents and stuff of, that are, that are making certain decisions. You know, in our case, we have a, you know, the governor of New York state or, or the mayor of New York and they make these decisions and really, unfortunately, um, music is not going to be, I think, first on their agenda. The one, thing we have going for us in, in, in New York is that Broadway is such a huge money maker. Um, and it does come down to money, some of this, that they're going to have to try to find a way to do something. And uh, uh, I'm not sure what it'll be, but, the, you know, the, the economics of it are, are incredible, too. But I look at it more as just, the, you know, the, the lack of music in a, in a culture creates a real... Um, depression i think um if you even look at you know the the um back in the so-called depression of the early part of last century you know music was a huge force you know you had louis armstrong and you know count basie's band just just starting and beginning and you know and 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 even in world war ii music was was a huge part of even that, that awful time of of a of world war that's when bebop was invented and that sort of music was, was really alive and well, even in the worst of times. And so this is the first time that actually music has been totally shut down in the entire world. I think in the history of the whole planet, because um, even <clears throat> in past times, it, it, it wasn't completely shut down like this. So it's a difficult one, you know? Yeah, it certainly is. It certainly is. Well, I'm looking forward to when it gets back. Um, thank you for the music. Thank you for the new CD. I, I look forward to spending more of it on the show. Stay safe out there, man, and good luck with this album. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, that you're digging it. I was wondering what, which cuts um, have, are, have you been preferring to play? Let me see um, right off the top of my head. Let me Let me just take a look here and see. I love the whole album. Let me just see which one I played last week. Um, I have to say it's the first time I've recorded a Bob Marley song, even though I love him. It's not usually um, saxophone uh, necessarily music, but I, I really like that's another one that I didn't realize was going to have a double meaning. I liked the song and wanted to do it in a kind of folk context, you know. Sure. Um, and, and, and I like that because... There's some people, we have to realize we're all big jazz um, fans and players and our whole life is is around. Of There's many people that, that have other perspectives. And so then Bob Marley can can draw them into listening to uh, Steve Slago. And that isn't why I do it. I, but the reason I did it is I really like that song. Um, and I like the lyrics of it too, which actually are, are uh, kind of... Uh, uh, really relevant in, in this time period too if you listen yeah. to the lyrics of that song because it's a it's a racial um, protest song in a sense um, yeah. and, and, it's, and it's also about world um, you know he talks about you know world problems and how you have a positive attitude about not letting it 
to feed your spirit and and so that really became it, to me it was like wow I, you know this song idea of doing this song was way back in february way before i thought there was a pandemic and um yet it um they almost prophesized the the coming months and so i'm really glad i put that because i that was one that i wasn't we did that at the end of the session and myself is like producing the record i I wasn't absolutely sure whether I would include it, and I had some other things I could do if I wanted to. And um, then when I listened back on it, it had a real vibe to it that I liked right away. It was definitely different than anything else on the record, but uh, it um, it was a no-brainer to include it, you know, right away. Yep. Well, I used I I played a live on the show, so um, I plan on playing more, but. Um, Again, man, thank you for the music. Thank you for taking the time out today. And well, I'm glad you like Alive because that really was the title song, and that's the first one we recorded. Yeah. And so I, I, I appreciate that. I I, um, sure. I I myself really like the the vibe. I like the way Jason Tiemann is playing on on the whole record, but on that cut, he really makes it have a a, a beautiful like jazz James Brown vibe to it you know and um that's that's not easy to get and i i think both him and marty kenny marty's a new upcoming guy on the scene in new york you know um and both of them are, are to me just play really strong on this and uh i know they're happy to have it out and everything like that without a doubt well it's wonderful man I look forward to playing more of it. Hey, good luck with everything. Stay safe up there. Thank man. you, Joe. We, man, we really appreciate Radio Lives, man. Radio is the rules. So, uh, Amen. Keep it happening. Keep that, man. My pleasure. All Take right. it easy, man. Thanks for listening and tuning in to another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest cats in New York City, Kansas City, and spots all over the world giving fans all that jazz. Thanks to Steve for his time, music, and cool. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino in the iTunes Store. Visit Neon Jazz at YouTube.com and for everything Neon Jazz all the time, go to the neonjazz.blogspot.com. Until next time, enjoy the jazz, my friends. Neon Jazz.